Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a countdown of my top 12 coolest things coming to WoW in patch 725. 725 is a minor patch coming to Live Legion servers fairly soon, and it's got a lot to get excited about. Number 12. Heirloom upgrades to 110. Finally. Legion didn't start out as the kindest expansion for alts, but we've been moving steadily in the right direction. In patch 725, you'll be able to purchase weathered heirloom armor casings and scabbards to upgrade your previously capped heirloom items to scale up to 110. Combine full heirlooms with account-wide Legion flying and the stellar experience from invasions, and you are on a fast track to having an army of alts with no legendaries. Number 11. No more key depletion. In 725, you will no longer have to worry about burning your precious Mythic Plus key. All Keystone dungeons will reward one chest with three items if you make the timer, or two items if you don't. Finishing too slow will give you a new Keystone for a random dungeon, just downgraded one level. Even if you don't finish the run at all, you'll get a Keystone for the same dungeon that just kicked your butt one level lower. Disastrous key runs are less punishing now, so you can get out there and pug your heart out without fear of ruining your Keystone. Number 10. A new raid tier. Tomb of Sargeras was technically part of patch 7.2, but it's very likely that the raid will open on or a week after the launch of 725. With it, we get 9 new bosses, brand new tier sets with new bonuses for every spec, and the return of those old guildies who only come back for new raid tiers. Nighthold was great, but it's time to move on. With a new tier, we'll be able to upgrade our legendaries up to item level 970 through a new Titan Essence quest. Number 9. Flight Map Toys. This is a brand new feature, and it's kind of unexpected. In 725, you'll be able to purchase toys which teach all of the flight paths in either the Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor. Because it's a toy, once you have it, you can then learn those flight points on every alt you have or ever make forever. They cost 15k gold each, and there's a version for both Horde and Alliance, so if you want both continents unlocked for both factions, it'll set you back 60k. This is a really useful perk for anyone leveling a new alt from scratch, and a healthy sized gold sink at the same time. Number 8. Major class balance changes and reworks. With a new patch comes a new wave of adjustments to class tuning. The mighty will probably fall, the tiny will get lifted up, and I'm sure somebody will be forgotten and get mad. The class changes coming in 725 are extensive, and I recommend reading the latest patch notes for the full gist of them. Brewmasters in particular are getting some core rotational changes to try and smooth out the keg-slinging experience. Number 7. Black Temple Time Walking. You asked for time walking raids, and in 725, Blizzard delivers. The Black Temple will be available to Q4 during Burning Crusade Time Walking Week. On top of your time warped badges, you'll be able to collect Tier 6 armor appearances, raiding with Leisha's battle pets, and even the Warglaives of Azanoth. Demon Hunters will be able to collect the Warglaive's appearance for Mog by completing the I'll hold these for you until you get out achievement. If you have the BC achievement of collecting both Warglaives on a character that can equip them, and you then kill Illidan in Time Walking Black Temple on your Demon Hunter, you'll earn the Arsenal and be able to transmog to a Legendary for the first time in WoW history. Number 6. The Chromie Scenario. A new scenario is being added in the patch called the Deaths of Chromie. Chromie needs our help to hopefully, probably not die in some time travel bronze dragonflight thingamajig. In any case, there's a new transmog armor set for each armor type from the scenario. Maybe I'm biased from playing a priest for too long, but the cloth looks by far to be the best set in my opinion. There's also potentially a new bronze welt pet. The PTR has a pet in the journal labeled as Test Dragon Pet with the moves Sandstorm, Bend Time, and Cheat Death. Potential spoilers? We won't know until we play it. Number 5. The Dead Mines Pet Battle Dungeon. Originally, I could have sworn that it was announced that we were getting both Dead Mines and Nomer gone, but at this point, it's quite likely that they're holding on to Nomer for patch 7.3. In any case, Dead Mines is a fantastic pet battle dungeon that you won't want to miss. In order to play it, you'll need to have done the Wailing Caverns pet dungeon at least once, so do try and get through that before the patch. Dead Mines is better paced, and I personally found it more fun than the Wailing Caverns. It's bringing new battle pets, of course, and once you've done it once, you'll gain a cooldown free teleport from Dalaran to Westfall. Get your teams ready by checking out my full Deadmines Pet Dungeon guide linked in the video info. Number 4. Holiday Dress Up. So maybe this isn't as high up on everyone else's list, but I am really excited about this. In 725, holiday appearance items such as the winter sweaters and lovely dresses will be transmogable, but only during the duration of their holiday. 
That means that you can put together sets for Winter Vale, Midsummer, Brewfest, Noble Garden, Love is in the Air, and Hallow's End, and then when October rolls around, wear a pumpkin on your head right through the event. I kind of miss decorating for the holidays in my garrison, but this means that I can decorate for the holidays on my face. I'm so game. Number three, the Trial of Style. I haven't been this hyped for an in-game event in forever. The Trial of Style is an in-game transmog competition where you show off your finery versus five other players and vote for your favorites. It's on the week-long event rotation, so it'll be up for a week at a time, but it won't be available very often. You'll earn MOG tokens for competing and even more for winning. Save up tokens to spend on new appearances, which infuriatingly enough haven't been added to the PTR yet. It's hard to be patient when you're this excited. I'm getting ready for the Trial of Style by filling out my appearance collection in the meantime, which is a pretty fun grind that never ends. Number 2. New Battle Pets. You had to know this was going to be near the top. So far, I count 7 new pets in 725, and there's still time for them to add more. We have that mysterious test whelp, which is almost certainly from the Chromie scenario. For finishing the Deadmines Pet Dungeon, we have the Mining Monkey. On the Deadmines Pet Vendor for weekly acquired bottle caps, we have the Faux Reaper Point Nine, the Pocket Cannon, and Tricorn. And in the newest build, we have two new pets that are supposedly from pickpocketing. Steal yourself a Dig Rat and a Sneaky Marmot, although off of who is anybody's guess. That Marmot's got a 10-year-old model, but some really dope moves. He can counter Undead with Chomp, buff his damage with Prowl, and hide from attacks with Burrow. He's also randomly got humanoid abilities with Jab, Blinding Powder, and Smoke Bomb. At first look, this thing is a PvP monster and I can't wait to get my hands on one. Finally, my number one pick for coolest thing coming in 725, Class Specific Legendary Talent Rings. Every single class is getting a new legendary ring, and each one comes with a socket and gives you a talent. That means that with this ring, you can use two talents from that row at once. These are very obviously not finished yet, and there's only a few in the file so far, but once they're done, these are going to be cool. How good they are depends a lot on which talent they give your spec, but I love that they don't take up a tier slot. Tier slot legendaries are the bane of my existence, and the sooner I can ditch them, the better. I think for most classes, the new rings will be middle of the road legendaries at worst. Assuming that they drop like the other legendaries, I recommend doing your best to collect the existing ones before the patch, so you can pick up your new ring fairly early in 725. It's mildly noteworthy that I did not see any new mounts at all on the 725 PTR. We'll gain access to class mounts around this time, as well as the Tomb of Sargeras drop and achievement mounts, but all of those were technically included in 7.2. Maybe after doing all the class mounts, the mount-making people needed a break. It's also been quite some time since we've seen a shot mount, so that's my theory. Patch 725 will likely drop along with Tomb, or a week before in mid-June-ish, so we're approximately a month or so away. It's looking good, and I can't wait to dig into the new content. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think, please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more, and have a wonderful, wonderful day! Bye!